Okay, gang, got another studio update here for you. I just want to um, show you what I'm thinking about doing for our wire or cable management problem behind our two racks. So if you've been watching all the install videos over the last two months, you'll know that we have what some people would consider a cable management issue. <laughs> and although this isn't actually too bad when you consider all the cables that we had to hook up, um, this is not bad, but um, and it's behind the racks, you really can't see it. And But one of the things that I've been concerned about, and a couple of you have made mention in the comment section in some of the videos, um, and you're right, that um, I'm worried about some strain relief on some of these connectors where these things, you know, these cables, they pull on the connectors. That's probably not a good thing um, because everything is coming up, you know, from the ground and coming up in there, you know, there's there's tension here. Even though I, you know, use this little stool temporarily to take the weight of this big D-sub cape snake that we have. And then that comes down into the rat's nest and then it just goes out and branches out depending on where you're looking. I want to try to get some of the, some of the, um, some of the tension off of these and maybe organize this in a better way. And I was thinking about ways to do this. And I think I might have come up with at least with um, a temporary solution or something that I at least want to try. So. The first thing I'm going to have to do is going to have to make sure that everything is completely labeled. I think I've captured everything. You might have seen that in one of the other videos. I've gone through on every single XLR connector, power cable, uh, oh, there's a couple up here that are not labeled, so I'm wrong. Every piece of gear, everything is labeled or almost labeled. Um, so when I disconnect some of these, I know exactly where to plug them back in. I have some cables on the patch bays that I might need to label. Some of them are, some of them aren't, but anyway, I'm gonna go through that. But then what I'm thinking about doing <clears throat> is I, I was able to come up with this solution. Let me show you. And sorry for the gorilla style shaky video here, but hey, this is gonna work. So what I'm thinking about doing is I picked this up on Sweetwater. This is a, a little tabletop, a desktop rack for gear, for your desktop. It's made by uh, on stage. Okay, and this is a 19 inch, the width of the back of the rack. And what I'm thinking about doing, and you can see it's angled, right? A little bit, that that bottom piece will slide underneath the racks. Um, and then the cabling is gonna come, kind of come up here. And I'll show you in a minute what I'm kind of thinking. So I have this rack and then I also picked up on Amazon a couple of these things. Let me show you these. These are uh, cable management stuff for like, uh, oops, sorry, cable management rack mounted um, for like uh, IT closets and things like that. And this will mount right into the rack in any position that I want. And these, I can route cables through here. And I bought two of these. I don't know how well they're gonna work. We got a lot of D-sub cables, but I have one. And I got another one here. And what I'm thinking about doing is mounting those into the rack Okay, and then what I'm thinking about doing is taking this rack, follow me if you will. Don't you just love these behind the scene videos? <laughs> okay, so I'm thinking about doing something like this. Let me uh, put this down here for a second. So what I'm considering is taking the rack like this, get, obviously picking up all the cables, sliding this under, so it fits underneath one of the racks, okay? Because the racks are off the floor because they have wheels, there's plenty of room under here. Slide this under and then have all the D-sub cables kind of come over the top of this, right? So if you can envision, again, I'm doing this all by myself, so I'm sorry about the bad camera work. But if you can envision the all the cables, the big trunk of cables before it goes to the gear, it's kind of maybe still on this little stool, but then coming up over the top of this or into those channels on that wire management piece that I showed you. And then cable tied to this top bar. This is all made out of steel. And this will take the tension off. And then from here to the gear, there won't be any tension because everything will be resting on here. And I figured if I got two, if I just bought one for now to try it for the first rack. But if I take this, let me just back up a little. <clears throat> and if I slide the rack underneath the rack and then the cables come up over the top cable tie and attach or again if I mount those two cross braces 
with the cable management things that I just showed you and then go into the gear that'll take all the tension off the wires if I got if it works on one rack I'll get a second one of these because these were like 40 bucks at Sweetwater okay I'll link it in the description box below in case you guys need one but these are 40 bucks um, and these are all adjustable and I could put another one here and I can have both of these so I'll have two of these racks and all the cables go to the racks before or get cable tied and attached to this stand before it ends up going into the gear that should eliminate this kind of stuff where there's all kinds of tension because this will be elevated kind of like this and it'll be over it'll be attached to the top of the rack and therefore it's going to take all the strain off of this at least that's my thinking there's with all this Kate with all these cables with all these cables it's real hard to come up with a there's nothing on the market you can just buy you got to kind of come up with something and that's what I'm trying to do so I figured this would be a cheap solution a $40 stand that'll hold plenty of weight made out of steel it's all adjustable and a couple of these racks these things if this works and I can attach it to it um, again you know let's get the get it in camera or actually this is upside down and then the cables can kind of route through here or over the top or however I want to do it and I can rack mount that right to that rack that might be a good solution so that's the project I don't know if I'll finish it all today but I'd like to at least try one rack and see how that works maybe what I'll do the thing is I really do got to disconnect everything to do this right I really have to disconnect everything I think I think I don't know I'm gonna have to see how I can do it. I'd like to try maybe this rack first because there's less cables and see I really want to try to organize this better but before I even get to that I have to make sure that every one of our cables is labeled with the orange gaffers tape I think it is there just may be a couple of cables that are not so when I do disconnect and reconnect I know where everything goes and if I have everything labeled I could even get brave and just disconnect everything throw all the cables on the floor and just route them one at a time I don't know so that's the project uh, once I'm done or I get halfway done I'll show you what I got and I'll piece this video together over the next day or two and let you know if this works and if you guys have a rat's a rat's nest of cables similar to my rat nest <laughs> maybe this solution will work for you so I'll see you guys in a bit and maybe we can see how this goes okay guys so I'm finished and here is the after and I'll walk you through kind of what I did here I will say even though it looks still like a big rat's nest of cables it is a lot neater looking than originally at least I think it is maybe I'll be able to put up a before and after shot <laughs> somewhere in this video but anyway this stand worked out really well um, it probably would be better to have a second one but I was I managed to do it all in one and I know it's a little challenging to see let me see if I can get some more light down here so again I went through and I made sure every single cable was labeled there were a few that weren't all power cables everything now again the biggest concern for me was I wanted to take stress off of the connectors I didn't want I wanted strain relief and I, I was able to accomplish that so even though it may look a little messy we have no pulling on any of the cables anywhere it really worked out well all down here all the gear and even on the D sub cable so again if you remember the beginning part of the video where you saw the rack now you can't see the the, the details of the rack because it's all covered in cables but I was able to mount and I know it's challenging to see here but you can see these these channels that I showed you at the beginning of the video I have two of them I probably could have done with a third to be honest I picked them up on Amazon for like 15 bucks or 20 bucks each and the rack was like $40 and I and what I did was all of the D subs and there's 24 of them are routed through the different channels and then up into the rack wherever it needed to go and you can see down there all the orange labels those are the patch bays and the patch bays was the biggest challenge um, one of the things I had to redo is I had to go through and I had to more clearly identify the, the and label properly the D sub cables to make sure that I knew where everything was being connected so what I did was just so you know um, I tried to do this in a neat way where I just kind of lifted up the cables and slid the rack under there was no way I literally disconnected every single D sub cable every single uh, XLR cable from all the gear I pulled it all out it was all sitting back here on the floor and I went one at a time one cable at a time routing things 
labeling things, making sure everything was labeled, and now you can see all the patch bays. And again, the one thing you really can't tell in the video, but I can tell you for sure, is that there's no, there's no strain on these cables at all, where before, these things were like being pulled down and there was a lot of stress on the connectors. That was the one thing that I was concerned mostly about and especially on the Apollos, on the interfaces, the X16s. Uh, that was that was big. Now they're not. Now you can tell and I can tell just by feeling on them that there's no stress, there's no strain, no nothing. So basically what I did is I routed them down through here went through the channels, these two, the bottom channel down here, which has the most cables, those went to the patch bay. Then I mounted the second channel rack here, and this is where the ones went up for the XLR for all the gear, and for the X16s. Um, and then this up here, this is just one single cable that, this is where all my, all the different input sources to the console are. So uh, the main audio for the for the DAW out of the X16 is one set of uh, XLRs. I have a DVD player hooked up. Um, I have, a, a, what else, a, a turntable hooked up. So that's what all this is. So I just cable tied it there. So it actually worked really well. Th this was a good solution. And again, it's not as cluttered on the floor as it was. Part of my problem, also is that when we first bought these cables, um, I bought 15 foot runs when we probably could have got better, could have got with 10, could have done, excuse me, with 10 foot cables. So there is some extra cable here being, you know, kind of coiled up that we probably could have used shorter cables, but at the time before the console arrived, they didn't know what I was gonna need, so I'd rather be safe than sorry. And all I basically did was just push this rack as close to the rack as I could get, and it worked. Um, then we still got some some other wiring that we could do that I would want to do with the power cables and rerouting of the power cables It's not you know, there's some stuff down here some of the computer cabling some of these power cables It's still not perfect some computer cables here. It's not perfect, but the goal was get rid of all the get rid of all the um, the strain on the connectors and I've achieved that so again here is the look kind of behind the rack Again, you can't see this from the front. It's a lot more cleaned up. Putting that big bundle on that little stool really helped relieve some of the strain, and then that rack was really great. So again, that, that rack, if you look at the beginning of the video, I bought it at Sweetwater, it was like 40 bucks. The two channel um, brackets were like $15 each on Amazon. And again, I probably could have used a third one, and that would be perfect. And although I thought I might need a rack here and a rack here, I was able to do it with one. So it worked out pretty well, because um, most of the cabling is in there in the first rack anyway. So that's really it. Hopefully that's uh, helpful to some degree. Even these cables here, there's a very, very little tension on these connectors. This, this is the only one that there's a little bit of tension. I gotta try to maybe lift this up a little more and cable tie this differently, but these are fine. So it's just this one cable, actually these two cables. It's not pulling too hard, but I need to uh, I need to kind of address that a little bit. The cable's just a little too short. Actually, I think I even have like six inch extenders that I can put on these and then plug them in and that would drape this down a little more and it'd be a little less, but anyhow. So until, um, you know, until this system ever moves to another studio, I think I'm gonna leave it like this for now. I don't think it's that bad. If I had more space in a different room uh, where I can really spread things out a little bit more, I would do something even better than this. But in the end, you always have, you always have tons of cables. So that is our kind of cable management project for now. And again, here are the racks. If you have not seen the latest update of what we have. Um, so starting over here, we have two uh, Apex 204s with the big bottom. Um, one is for toms, the other one's for kick and snare. We have two distressors that we're using on a, an electric guitar bus. We have the SSL Fusion. Uh, obviously here on the master bus, we have a 2020 Mac Mini M1. We have um, three Apollo 16s. We have two X16s, which is the new Thunderbolt 3. And then I picked up the third one, which is the last model before this model. This is the Apollo 16 MK2 Thunderbolt 2. And I'm using a Thunderbolt 2 to Thunderbolt 3 adapter to daisy chain these three together. That gives me 48 in, 48 out to the origin. We have our three, pa our four patch base down here. We have uh, three switchcrafts, a 96 
and two 64 points, and then we have a ART one on the bottom. Okay, a lot of space available in our patch bays for future expansion, so we won't need any more patch bays anytime soon. Um, over in this rack, we have the um, West Audio Titan 500 series. We have the Dione VCA compressor. We have the new Rhea, uh, which is the very new compressor, tube compressor. We have the Radial Ecstasy, which is a, um, a reamping kind of a thing where you can patch in guitar pedals and stuff as an insert, which is kind of cool. I haven't really played with that yet, but that's something I'll do in the future. We have the West Audio NG Bus Compressor. That's on our drum bus. Oh, the Dione, the one on the left is on our keyboard bus. This is on our acoustic guitar bus, our second guitar bus, the Rhea. Then we have the Audioscape uh, Opto Compressor LA-2A. That is on our bass for now. Um, and then up top here, we have the Black Lion Audio Bluey. This is an insert on the lead vocal channel. And then we have our ART Trans Y Stereo Effect Compressor. That is on the background vocals. And the one thing that's coming in, actually in a couple of days, uh, as I'm shooting this video, is Audioscape has sent me now their V Comp Plus Compressor, which is the Very Mew Compressor, which should be a lot of fun. So that's actually gonna fit right down there. And then this rack will be officially full. I think that's a three spacer. So that's gonna be cool. So it's their version of the Stay Level, which is an amazing compressor. Sounds great on everything. We're gonna be checking that out very, very soon. So again, please like, share, subscribe. Let me know below if you have any other wire and cable management uh, ideas and uh, thoughts and advice. I would greatly appreciate it. And until the next video, I've been Dave with Mixing Music Analog and MixingMusicAnalog.com. And I'll see you guys soon. Take care, everybody.